Latvia to Indonesia and Singapore. This new economic region will rival and perhaps surpass the rest of the world in the 21st century. In uh, recent years, and, and certainly as we look ahead, more money will be coming from other countries in Asia which have developed very rapidly. For example, we, uh, we have worked with uh, uh, investors in Korea, in Taiwan, uh, in, in Indonesia. Uh, I'll be going to Thailand in my next, uh, next trip abroad. Uh, there's a lot of money out there. Uh, it's a question of getting to the people who are the, making the decisions and have them make the decisions to uh, place the funds here in the United States. America's search for funds in Asia is a historic reversal. Once the biggest investor in Asia, we are now the biggest borrower. After World War II, Washington spent billions and fought two wars in the Pacific to hold back the communist threat. But now that capitalism is blossoming in Southeast Asia, America cannot afford to take advantage of the investment opportunities it helped create. It's taken us a while to appreciate the value of dairy businesses, dairy economies, and the uses to which we can put our business over there. We never thought of Taiwan or Singapore before, but now they've become factors. Singapore businessmen are out looking for businesses to buy in Silicon Valley. Thailand has become uh, a much more productive, many-sided country than it was before. Indonesia is advancing. Malaysia is becoming a modern society. These are no longer to be dismissed as underdeveloped countries. Even communist Vietnam wants closer economic ties with America. But the United States has been slow to abandon its Cold War economic embargo. Meanwhile, in the rest of Southeast Asia, memories of Japan's World War II occupation linger, and the region wants more American investment to counter the threat of Japanese economic domination. But the U.S. has not developed a new policy to deal with the changes in the region. The government has yet to formulate a coherent strategic response um, to what has happened in these countries, what has happened uh, in Asia, uh, in the Pacific Rim countries. Uh, the, the tales of you can go back 20, 30 years, and it's the same issues that keep cropping up over and over again. Um, the loss of competitiveness in industry after industry. The assumption that with this last trade agreement that these problems are going to be resolved. They're not going to be resolved. Um, and until we have an understanding and a willingness to face what has happened in that part of the world, uh, we're going to continue to decline as a country. While much of the nation sees Asia's emergence as an economic threat, one area is aware of new opportunities. America's own Pacific Rim. Trade with Asia and the inflow of capital and immigrants has helped make the Pacific Coast more robust economically than the rest of the nation. Seattle is the closest port to Asia and the export-import flow is surging. I've seen it grow astronomically, particularly in Korea and uh, Taiwan. Japan has always been a comer for for years and years. The ships are getting better, they're getting faster. I can only see it growing. And one more makes five! Pacific Rim is, is you know, us and the Orient, and we're, we're the gateway to the Pacific Rim, more or less. And uh, the trade to us would be good for us, because we, you know, we're here to do business. This is America's most important commercial connection to Asia. Boeing 747 Jumbo Jet, the nation's most complex and sophisticated piece of merchandise. These are some of the craftsmen who helped build the original in 1969. It's heartwarming to see good product out there and to see a great success in what I'm doing. These are the biggest customers. Today marks another milestone in the long-standing relationship between Japan Airlines and the Boeing Company. It is my great honor to welcome you all to the delivery of the 75th Japan Airlines 747. Congratulations to Japan Airlines on building the world's largest fleet of the world's largest airliners. 
day you saw the ceremony where Japan Airlines took delivery of their 75th 747. Japan Airlines is the largest corporate purchaser of U.S. goods and services in the world. Uh, I think that represents close to over $9 billion that they have purchased from the U.S. We still have 61 more 747s on order and option to deliver to Japan Airlines. So you could see just the magnitude and the significance of that customer is, not only to Boeing, but to the balanced payment issue. Boeing is the nation's number one exporter, and Asia is its number one overseas market. Many of its components are also produced there as part of multi-million dollar subcontracting deals with China, Taiwan, Korea, and Japan. Even Mongolia is no longer off limits. While this former Soviet satellite is trying to recapture the glories of its past, with a movie epic on the mighty warrior Genghis Khan, it is also trying to enter the jet age. Well, sometime next year, there will be Boeing airplanes uh, flying in, in Mongolia. And uh, we'll be uh, probably be training Mongolian uh, pilots and engineers uh, this year. Boeing has serious competitors in the Southeast Asian market, McDonnell Douglas and Europe's Airbus. To meet their challenge, Boeing is expanding production by 40% and introducing its first new model in a dozen years, the 777. One only has to travel in Asia where you can't get a seat between Hong Kong and Taipei. They have 25 wide-body flights a day, and it's, you can't just ring up like you can in the United States and get a seat. It's very, very difficult. The airports can't take any more frequency. So the only way to, to meet that demand is with bigger airplanes, and that's what we think the 777 is going to accomplish. To help meet the tremendous cost of developing and launching the new 777, Boeing has taken Japan this, in as a venture capital uh, partner. And for the first time, Japan, previously only a subcontractor, is doing design as well as manufacturing. It is producing the fuselage. This is a major advance for Japan's aerospace industry, which is aimed at catching up with and possibly surpassing the West. Some workers are worried. I personally, I'd like to see uh, Boeing uh, set up in an, uh, a third world country, a country that used the work rather than deal with the, with the Japanese who are likely to steal the technology and build the plane themselves. I think this country's benefited a great deal from Japanese technology. Uh, this program is being shot on a Japanese camera, for one thing. Uh, we work in a machine shop where the, the best machines are Japanese. Uh, the most technologically advanced uh, equipment. Our computer workstations are largely Japanese. Um, I, I personally would like to see a, a transfer of uh, technology between the two countries and, and other countries besides Japan. It is almost an industry given that the next generation of high-tech aircraft will be multinational ventures because of the huge cost and the varying expertise required. Cooperative competition, or perhaps competitive cooperation, is the formula for the future. Economists studying America's industrial competitiveness have examined Boeing carefully. Glenn Pascal, former director of finance for the state of Washington, has written about Boeing and corporate strategies for long-term growth. Boeing bets the net worth of its company every decade on the next generation of airliner. The research and development costs are in the billions, and it's such a competitive business that the profits Boeing accumulates are not large. They plow all of the profits that they build up into R&D for the next airliner. They want to be the best in the world, and they figure the profits will follow if they can maintain their market position. It's a high wire act, and they do it decade after decade. Another Seattle success story is the world's largest computer software producer, Microsoft. Plugged into the booming markets of Asia, it is thoroughly American, built on individual creativity, sometimes uniquely expressed. The computer nerd with a genius for business who looked into the future and saw a software empire is 